Hey guys, welcome back to Midwits Made Simple. Hope you all are doing great today. Watch this video fully and you will really be benefited. In this video, we're gonna see about tetracyclines. Before starting to watch this video, please adjust the video quality settings to 480p or above for better experience. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Tetracyclines belongs to a group of antibiotics which inhibit protein synthesis in the bacteria. This group includes tetracyclines, macrolides, clindamycin, streptogramins, chloramphenicol, oxazoidinones, and aminoglycosides. Of all these groups, the ones which are highlighted in red are super important, and of all those, the ones which are highlighted are really very important and they are tested often in your exams. And you will be using them mostly in clinics. So let's see the classification of tetracyclines. Based on the duration of action of these uh, antibiotics, tetracyclines are classified into short-acting, intermediate-acting and long-acting tetracyclines. The short-acting tetracyclines includes chlorotetracycline and tetracycline. The intermediate acting tetracyclines are demeclocycline and the long acting tetracyclines include doxycycline and minocycline. There is one more tetracycline which is known as tigicycline which is a semi-synthetic derivative of minocycline. Minocycline is a tetracycline which we have seen previously in the classification. So this um, antibiotic tigicycline is very active against various bacteria which are which are resistant to the previously described tetracyclines. So this digicycline is mostly reserved for very serious infections or something like that. And they are administered intravenously rather than giving them orally because they are not active orally. They are active intravenously. Now let's see the very important part of any antibiotic group, the mechanism of action. First of all, they are broad spectrum antibiotics, which means they are active against various spectrum, various groups of bacteria, starting from gram positive bacteria to gram negative bacteria, and they are active against some anaerobes too. And not only bacteria, they are active against few parasites, even such as Plasmodium falciparum. So they they are really broad spectrum antibiotics. They are bacteriostatic which means they prevent the further um, further division of bacteria but they they won't kill the bacteria so they are bacteriostatic the mechanism by which they act is by inhibiting protein synthesis which is the first thing which we saw in this video so how do they do that is that they bind to the 30th subunit of ribosomes so as you all know the ribosome in bacteria has got two subunits, one is 50S and the other is 30S. So these antibiotics bind to the 30th subunit of ribosomes and they prevent the binding of tRNA carrying the amino acid to the acceptor site on the mRNA ribosome complex. So it's not a complicated thing to remember. I'll tell you what to remember. The thing which you need to remember is that they inhibit protein synthesis and how do they do that is by um, binding to the 30S subunit of the bacterial ribosomes. This is what you need to remember. By doing so, they prevent addition of further amino acids to the proteins and they block protein synthesis. The pharmacokinetics is that uh, antibiotics such as doxycycline and minocycline are well absorbed orally, um, so they can be given orally. Mostly, these drugs are given as twice daily regimen um, but even a single a single dose per day regimen is sufficient but we have the practice of giving these antibiotics as a twice daily drugs uh, as I told you earlier tetracycline is given intravenously the absorption of uh, tetracyclines is impaired by uh, taking food or milk or antacids along with these drugs so I'll tell you why in a short time so before going to that, you need to know you need to know few exceptions for this rule. Um, doxycycline is a very important exception for this. Doxycycline's absorption is not impaired by food, milk, and antacids, but most of the other 
tetracyclines absorption is impaired by food, milk and antacids if they are present in the stomach. This is because um, the divalent or polyvalent cations such as calcium ions, magnesium ions, magnesium ions and aluminum ions will form chelation complexes with tetracyclines and this will prevent their mechanism of action and their absorption by doing so their um, food milk and antacids will prevent the action of tetracyclines so you need to consider the fact that if the patient is going to take tetracyclines he shouldn't have taken milk or antacids previously or after taking the um, tetracycline antibiotics okay so the other important pharmacokinetic feature is that tetracyclines crosses placenta very well and they are also secreted in breast milk um, the concentrations attained in cerebrospinal fluid is not so much as compared to these two and uh, approximately the concentration in CSF is about 25 percentage of that which is present in serum now the important fact in describing the placenta and breast milk is that this drug can cross the placental barrier so it can reach the fetus and can cause toxic effects and they are secreted in breast milk which means they can also they can also enter the fetus the, they can also enter the infant or baby while they are um, while they are fed by breast milk excretion is mostly by glomerular filtration by kidneys and few part is excreted by biliary method and few, few part is excreted in feces intrahepatic circulation as you all know is the thing which is dealt by the bile and all that so this intrahepatic circulation helps to maintain a sustained blood level of tetracyclines and there are a few exceptions for the fact which I have told in the first point of the previous slide. Drugs such as doxycycline and minocycline are excreted mostly by non-renal mechanisms. So if they are excreted by non-renal mechanisms, they can very well be given in patients with renal insufficiency. Okay? So if the, if the patient has any renal problems such as um, renal failure, not exactly renal failure, However, some mild renal conditions, uh, not accounting to renal failure, um, they can be given with uh, doxycycline and minocycline, and it's quite safe, not so harmful. Now we'll see about the resistance part. Uh, the resistance is the protection of the bacteria against um, these antibiotics, and that's mainly by three mechanisms, which is impaired inflex or increased efflex. By, by using active transport processes and other method is by ribosomal protection which means the bacteria will secrete some proteins which will protect the ribosome site, ribosome, uh, site uh, which is used by the tetracyclines to bind and this will prevent the tetracyclines from binding to um, the site on the ribosome which is the 30S subunit and the other method is by enzymatic inactivation the most important of these three methods is the first two which is impaired influx or increased deflex of the antibiotic from the bacteria and the other one is the ribosomal protection the third one is not very significant um, the tigicycline which I have told earlier which is a parenteral antibiotic given intravenously can overcome this resistance in many bacteria such as Staph aureus and many other bacteria however they are not active against Proteus and Pseudomonas because Prote Proteus and Pseudomonas aeruginosa can produce multi-drug resistant efflux pumps which can send out or if, if, uh, which, which can pump out um, various antibiotics not only tetracyclines they, they are resistant to various antibiotics using various resistance mechanisms so treating these two bacteria is a really big deal now the, let's see about the uses of tetracyclines um, in rickettsial infections tetracyclines remain the drug of choice 
they can be all they can be used in mycoplasma infections chlamydia infections and field spirochetes um, in helicobacter pylori eradication program or in helicobacter helicobacter pylori infection treatment you can use tetracyclines in cholera which is caused by vibrio cholerae tetracyclines do not play much sig much significant role in treating the infection but they do have a role in increasing the shedding of the the, the decreasing sorry i'm sorry they decrease the shedding of the bacteria from the uh, person so by doing so they prevent the they prevent the uh, they prevent the spread of the infection so basically this they prevent the shedding of bacteria from the patient and by doing so they help to prevent the infection from spreading to other people they can also be used in few sexually transmitted diseases and in the in the prophylaxis of plasmodium falciparum uh, doxycycline is um, one of the drug of choice so there is a, a specific regimen for um, doxycycline in patients who are in people who are traveling to malaria endemic areas so they need to take doxycycline before and during the stay in that place and uh, co after after coming to after coming from that place for a few days they need to take doxycycline and this will prevent them from getting uh, malaria so doxycycline is a very useful drug in the prophylaxis of plasmodium falciparum infection which is malaria and there are also other uses which are uh, such as acne and other skin skin conditions or skin infections they can be used in exacerbation of bronchitis which is due to sudden um, exacerbation on pre-existing condition and they are they can be used in community acquired pneumonia and other conditions such as Lyme disease and leptospirosis and few other conditions now the adverse drug reactions of tetracyclines hypersensitivity um, as we described in as we described as a adverse drug reaction for many antibiotics we can describe them here too but still hypersensitivity is quite rare with tetracyclines the gastrointestinal adverse effects are common in most of the patients and the two the one which i have highlighted in red which is nausea is very common that is it, it will be present in about one third of a patient one third of patients who are taking tetracyclines even though nausea is common vomiting and diarrhea are quite rare in taking tetracyclines and the other way by which they cause adverse drug reactions is they disturb the intestinal microflora which means the microflora which are which are normally present in the human body are killed or disturbed by tetracyclines which will enhance the growth of other harmful bacteria such as pseudomonas or clostridium, clostridium difficile etc so this can cause symptoms such as oral pruritus which is itching um, vaginal or oral candidiasis and clostridium difficile associated colitis um, and some other similar conditions which are due to suppression of the normal microflora, microflora of the intestine and the other adverse drug reaction of tetracyclines which is very important to remember is that they cause hyperpigmentation of bones and teeth this is because of a pharmacokinetic feature which I have told you earlier. Can you remember that? Yes, you're right. Tetracyclines will bind to calcium ions. So, as you all know, calcium is present in excess in bones and teeth. So, the tetracyclines will bind to bones and teeth and this will lead to inhibition of the growth of bones or they can affect the growth of bones and they can bind to the teeth and they can cause hyperpigmentation of the teeth so tetracyclines cannot be used um, so comfortably in pregnant women so the fetus will be affected and they can't be used in breastfeeding women also because I've told you earlier that they can be secreted in breast milk too 
and they should not be used in children whose dentition is not complete yet because when their new teeth is growing uh, that may get pigmented and that will cause difficulties and they are also known to cause liver and kidney damage there are few conditions such as um, of um, Fanconi anemia which are due to using outdated tetracyclines so that's not very common however you should be cautious while using tetracyclines in patients with liver and kidney damage that's it for today uh, if you like this video help me make more videos by visiting patreon.com slash medbits made simple and donating even a very small amount to me if you like this video please like and share this video to your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you